Pressure cooking is my kind of fast food. And I'm going to make for lunch today chili just out of some things that I happen to have in the cabinet. It's great to have a recipe and go to the store and buy all the things you need and make a delicious meal. But it's also not a big deal just to throw things together, some things that you just happen to have in your cabinet. What I'm using today is white kidney beans. I found some diced green chilies. I have a shallot here, some fire roasted diced uh, tomatoes. Here's tomato sauce, tomato paste. I have chili powder and garlic. And to that, I'm just going to add a little bit of ground beef I have frozen in the freezer. And that's going to be lunch. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and sear my onions and my garlic. So I've got this on the brown setting or the open sear setting. What I have here is a half of a large shallot and two garlic cloves. And I'm just going to put those right into the bottom of the pot. And it's only going to take a few minutes. I don't want to burn the garlic. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to go ahead and add my drained beans. And you can do this with dry beans as well. And I will do a video using dried beans for a soup or a stew at one point, just so you can kind of get an idea how to do that. I've gone ahead and turned the pressure cooker off because I don't want to saute these beans. Now it's important to note that when you're using the sear or you're using the browning uh, feature of your pressure cooker, you don't want to use it for long periods of time. If you use it more than 15 minutes, you're going to need to let the pressure cooker cool down a little bit more before you use it more. So you don't want to damage anything. So there's one can of the beans. And then I've got the diced tomatoes. Now I chose to use the juice with the diced tomatoes since it's already um, flavored with the garlic. That way I can get a little extra of the garlic flavoring in there. And I don't mind a little extra juice. I did drain the beans. So I'm going to add that to there. My chili, green chilies. And this is obviously a pretty mild um, flavor. You can put hot sauce in and whatever else if you want to make it spicy. This is a very basic setup here. The great thing about having a basic recipe is then you can add whatever you want to later. You're not really, um, you know, stuck by trying to find something fancy right off the bat. You can add anything to whatever flavor of guests or whoever you're cooking for. I've put a little bit of tomato paste in there. and Actually, I think I want to use about a half of that can and that was a six ounce can. So we've got about three ounces of the tomato paste. Let me get my measuring spoon. I think I'm going to add a tablespoon of my chili powder. Now you could add cumin, hot sauce, Tabasco, whatever, like I said. This is just going to be simple. Mmm, looks good already. Let's see here. Add a little bit of the sauce. A little bit of salt. And then I'm going to put in my bit of frozen ground beef. If this was fresh ground beef, I would have um, probably browned it up a little bit before I got started. The great thing about pressure cooking is you can cook from frozen. So let's go ahead and get the lid on and get this going. I have my pressure valve set to seal and I'm going to go ahead and start this for 15 minutes on the pressure cook setting. Now, a couple of things I want to make a note of here. Now, first of all, uh, when you're cooking with frozen foods and especially frozen ground beef, you want to make sure that you're using really, really lean ground beef because since you're cooking it from frozen, you're not going to be able to drain away the fat and you don't want your food swimming in fat. Second thing to note is that when you open this up, you're going to have a nice solid little chunk there of meat and you're going to have to break it up. So um, most of the time, you're really going to want to try to use ground beef that's fresh and that you've already browned. Browning also imparts a little bit of flavor into your meat. So this, by the way, is just as I've mentioned, a really quick method and you can use from frozen. So we're doing it that way because I just want to have some lunch right now. So I just want to make sure that we note that and we'll go ahead and get this started. You can see that it's counting up. 
Again, um, I'm using the 15 minutes because it's from frozen with the meat, but since we used canned beans, normally I'd probably cook this maybe eight to 10 minutes tops. Timer went off and this smells absolutely amazing. Crazy good. So I'm gonna show you how I go ahead and deal with this piece of meat so that way it doesn't, um, I don't mash everything up here while I'm cooking. So what I'm gonna do is it should be fully cooked now and I'm gonna remove it. Mmm. Okay, so what I've done here is after I removed the chili into a serving container, then I've put the uh, brick, so to speak, of cooked beef back in the pot, turned this onto the searing feature, and as you can see, I broke it up and I'm just lightly browning it in here. So I'm sort of kind of doing it after the fact. I let the pressure cooker sort of defrost and cook it, and now I'm browning it as an after fact. And then I'll go ahead and add it to the chili when it's all pretty much done. Here's the chili all put into a bowl. Now this took 20 minutes, start to finish. Now if that isn't fast food, you tell me what is. I've gone ahead and just put a little bit of shredded cheese right on top, and you can dress it up any way you like. Maybe a dollop of sour cream, maybe some diced onions, whatever. We're going to go ahead and give this a little bit of a taste. Mmm, that's really good.